Welcome to the ISO Show, dispelling myths and sharing tips for success to improve your business with ISO standards with your host, Mel Blackmore. Hello and welcome to the ISO Show. So are you looking to meet customer demands for more environmentally products and services? Do you need to reduce your emissions and improve your environmental record to remain competitive? And do you want to support your environmental claims with impartial verification and evidence? Well, if you do, then you're in the right place. Having a sustainability roadmap is critical to both government and industry right now, and also in the future. But when implementing effective climate change mitigation measures, the ability to differentiate between real and false claims of carbon neutrality is absolutely critical. If you're looking for a credible roadmap for your sustainability journey, Path 2060 can help you cut through the cynicism and doubt and maintain trust in your efforts to manage and reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. So in the last episode, we were talking all about ISO 14064, the Carbon Footprint Verification Standard. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by our resident carbonologist, David Algar, to share with us some information on the standard that everybody's talking about, which is a carbon neutrality standard, PAS 2060. Welcome, David. Hi, Mel. Thanks for having me again. Great. No, good to have you back. So, PAS 2060. It's a standard that not many businesses have actually heard of, but everybody's looking for a way to be carbon neutral and looking for some kind of form of verification and, and a credible scheme to demonstrate their carbon neutrality. So I know that you've been working a lot on PAS 2060 recently with clients. So could you just share with some of our ISO show listeners what PAS 2060 is? Yes, so PAS 2060 is the standard for the specification of the demonstration of carbon neutrality, to give it its full name. So it essentially outlines the requirements for any subject, whether it is an organisation, a specific site, event, or a government body, or actually even an individual person, to become carbon neutral. So in case you weren't familiar with the term or haven't heard of carbon neutrality before, as defined in the standard, it refers to the condition within a specified time period where there's been no net increase in global emissions as a result of the, your activities. So essentially you are not creating a net increase in greenhouse gas emissions as a result of your business activities. So is that the same as being net carbon zero? No, it's not the same because you will always be emitting some form of emissions, whatever form of business you are, whatever you do, wherever you are in the world, you're never going to get net zero because this would refer to it not emitting any emissions at all. So carbon neutrality refers to creating a balance where you offset your remaining emissions whereas net zero implies you don't admit any, which is not possible. I think with the, with the standard, it's looking at a specific period in, of time, isn't it? So at the moment, some organisations are taking a 12-month period. In some cases, they're doing it BC before COVID, which could be from a you know, financial year, which could be from the 1st of April 2019 to the end of March 2020. So again, you can't necessarily claim to be net carbon zero on an ongoing basis because you can only kind of look back retrospectively and, and look at being carbon neutral for a certain period, I guess. Is that true? Exactly, yeah. So an important part of PAS 2060 is, is quantifying and reducing your emissions. This is done through creating a carbon footprint management plan. So this is how you would start to reduce your emissions as low as possible. Obviously, as we know, that's never going to get to net zero. But the lower it is, the easier it will be to offset those residual emissions. Okay, great. So talking about carbon offsetting, could you just explain what that actually is and what does carbon offsetting involve? Yes, so this is essentially how you achieve carbon neutrality. So carbon offsetting involves the purchasing of carbon credits. These are financial contributions to schemes that remove greenhouse gases directly from the atmosphere or prevent emissions that would have occurred in the future without the scheme. So obviously this includes the well-known practice that everyone's familiar with of planting trees which obviously sequester carbon from the atmosphere directly, but can also cover thousands of projects in developing countries that help prevent future emissions and improve livelihoods. So examples of this could include providing cleaner cooking stoves for families, supporting renewables projects, so solar, hydro, all of them really, or even ecology projects, or even providing clean drinking water. So I believe when Blackmores carried out their offsetting a while ago, 
they made a donation to the Woodlands Trust in the UK and planted an amount of trees to help directly sequester carbon from the atmosphere. Yeah, and I think that you know many organisations are not just looking at offsetting; they are looking at you know beyond that, aren't they, in terms of carbon neutrality and also trying to make connections with the SDG, with the Sustainable Development Goals as well. So I know one thing that uh, we're doing with the Isology Hub is we're working with an organisation called B1G1, which works on the premise of, you know, you buy one and you give one. So from our point of view is when a new member joins the Isology Hub, we're going to be donating to a project in Madagascar, uh, which also includes tree planting as well as helping the communities to be more sustainable as well. So. I think people kind of need to, to think beyond just the carbon offsetting as a tick box exercise, but looking more strategically about the good that you want to do as an organisation and, and how that can be really impactful for many, many people, as well as, as obviously just planting trees. Exactly, yes. So above all else, and if you put all the clauses and technicalities of the standard aside, it is a great way to make a genuine positive impact on the environment. Yeah, so... Obviously, organisations are now becoming carbon neutral. So I think the last time when I bought, I sent a pair of trainers, the box of Nikes arrived and, and it was claiming carbon neutrality on there. So, you know, a lot of organisations are using this to their advantage. Not many businesses have heard of PAS 2060, but obviously there is quite a bit of talk that's growing, certainly in the standards field as well, with, with standards professionals and certification bodies. What's the main benefit for a business in adopting PAS 2060, David? Yes, so it does provide a reliable framework for quantifying, reducing and offsetting your emissions. So part of PAS 2060 involves obviously quantifying your emissions. So you need to know what you need to reduce and offset. This is where one of the standards we've mentioned previously in the podcast, ISO 14064 part one comes in, the standard for quantifying greenhouse gases. So PAS 2060 and ISO 14064 work quite well together because as with other sustainability standards, it's going to be a very useful tool to highlight opportunities for improvement within your organisation. As obviously combined, they will highlight the largest source of emissions. So in terms of setting targets, you know, are businesses using this framework to help to reduce uh, their energy resources as, as well as potential and cost savings? They are, yes. So part of the standard past 2060 is producing a carbon footprint management plan within this you would identify ways to reduce your emissions essentially so benefit of this is it can actually help you save money through better use of resources so for instance through lower energy use or if you happen to switch over to an electric vehicle fleet even better if they're fueled by renewable energies you may also find or starting to find that Having a way to manage your carbon footprint or demonstrate the commitment to carbon neutrality is starting to become a tendering requirement for both private and public contracts for new businesses. Yeah, we're looking at, you know, obviously governments have made a pledge uh, to be net carbon zero and, and how they're looking for organisations to demonstrate their carbon neutrality. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see this becoming more and more in demand through public sector and private sector tenders. So you may adopt PAS 2060, but what's the benefit of validating your carbon neutrality? Uh, yes, so this does demonstrate credibility and confidence to your stakeholders. So there are different options for this. You could do a self-verification where essentially you put your name to it and say you're confident in the work you've done. Or you could go for the other option, which is slightly more credible, which is getting a second party to look at it, such as Blackmore's, for them to go over the figures and the data put their name to it, which again is even more credible. What is generally regarded as the most credible way to validate this is to get a third party UCAS accredited certification body in to go over the data. So this may seem a bit daunting and it, it does require more work in some areas, but it is regarded as the most credible way to demonstrate this commitment to your stakeholders. Okay, cool. And that is actually part of the carbonology journey, isn't it? And, and part of that process that you can actually go through the steps of ISO 14064 and PAS 2060 and if you choose to self-verify or get a second party or third party to verify your carbon footprint and carbon neutrality then that's completely optional isn't it? An organisation can do as they wish there. 
So just, just talking about carbonology, I know that I mentioned it briefly in the, in the previous podcast and you started to share a bit of information on that. And the next podcast that we've got coming up is going through the seven steps in detail for carbonology. But how can carbonology help an organisation to meet the requirements of PAS 26 day? Uh, yes, so that's our new service that we've been alluding to quite a lot in these podcasts. So carbonology is our new seven step plan for businesses to become carbon neutral. It's based on the well-established and well-known methodologies within ISO 14064, which we know is the standard for quantifying your greenhouse gas emissions and PAS 2060, so the demonstration of carbon neutrality. So as I've mentioned a few times before, it is very difficult to commit to becoming carbon neutral and reducing your carbon footprint if you don't actually know what your carbon footprint is. So as I previously mentioned, ISO 14064 forms the first part of the carbonology process. So step one is quantifying. This is where you would quantify your emissions in a greenhouse gas inventory. So yes, once you've quantified your emissions using 14064, you've basically already met a lot of the clauses within PASS 2060. So you would have already set a scope, you would have established leadership commitment, established allocation of resources. So these standards really do complement each other very well. As by doing 14064, you've really done a lot of the work and the legwork that PASS 2060 requires. Okay, great. So it's, it's good that you kind of explained about the integration between those two standards and, and how they kind of dovetail into each other really nicely. So thanks very much for that, David. Great. Well, I think we've, we've covered everything for now. So uh, yeah, I look forward to catching up with you again, David, when we talk about carbonology in a lot more detail. So yeah, thanks very much for joining me today. Thanks, Mel. So I look forward to catching up with our ISO show listeners on the next podcast that we uh, record, which will be all about the seven steps and going into detail on carbonology and how you can meet the requirements of ISO 14064 and PAS 2060. In the meantime, however, if you'd like some further information on both of those standards and the carbonology service, just head over to our website, which is www.blackmoresuk.com. And also later on this year, we will be transferring information on carbonology, so training tools, techniques and templates, over into the Isology Hub. So that will be available later on in 2021. Okay, that's all for now. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks for listening. Looking to use ISO standards to drive better business practice? Contact us at blackmoresuk.com to access further information and book your free 15-minute call.